everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today sees the return of my painting on cardboard series. However, there is a little bit of a twist to this. Uh, today I am not painting with acrylic on cardboard, I am actually using my new gouache paints. And uh, yeah, so um, this cardboard here I got a while ago, I basically I just bought a few things and I thought, you know, this cardboard looks pretty nice. And I cut up a whole bunch of pieces to keep in case I ever wanted to paint on them. And yeah, uh, six months ago I actually started my first painting on cardboard uh, video and I drew some Pokemon. And then a little bit after that I did another one with acrylic and it was, uh, I believe, How to Train Your Dragon sort of fan art. So today I am coming back to this uh, and I'm doing a little bit more of Pokemon fan art but with the gouache paints. So the paints I'm using today are my Reeves gouache paints, uh, it's the first ever set of gouache that I've ever owned and I have used them previously maybe once or twice and uh, yeah I had a lot of fun doing this and I definitely wanted to use these again. So as you can see uh, I'm actually sketching out this piece with a mechanical pencil on this on this cardboard and basically what I'm trying to draw is a, a Pokemon trainer called Lily. Now for those who aren't aware, Lily is a, a character in Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, the, the show and the games. And yeah, she um, basically takes care of this Pokemon called Nebby. Nebby is a Cosmog and uh, she's not actually a Pokemon trainer per se. She does become one later, but at the time she doesn't like use Pokeballs or anything like that. So she carries around Nebby in uh, this little bag that she has. And Nebby is very, very cheeky and loves to uh, sneak out and run away. And uh, she's always worrying about Nebby. So I really love that sort of uh, relationship between the two. I think it's adorable. And uh, I really do like Lily because she has a lot of character development um, as opposed to other characters in Pokemon, I feel. So yeah. Now for the sketching of this, uh, it may look a little bit odd at the moment, uh, but, but that's because I wanted to try and you do a, a very different sort of angle than what I usually draw at. I wanted a sort of extreme angle with a foreshortening, so basically uh, the viewer is looking down at Lily, she's sort of uh, reaching up towards the sky, and as you can see it's sort of like a top down view almost, uh, a little bit of an angle so you can sort of see more of her clothes. But yeah, and basically what is happening, uh, Nebby has flown out of her bag and she is reaching out uh, to like sort of stop him. But obviously Nebby is so cheeky, so he's just having a lot of fun and yeah, she's being Lily. I actually had a lot of uh, trouble with this foreshortening because I rarely do this. So um, I did have a little bit of difficulty, but I just had to erase it and go back in and all of that stuff. And uh, what I'm doing now is um, I finally got the sketch to where I want it to be. And I just sprayed a nice little layer of workable fixative over the top. Uh, this is basically just so it sets the sketch down and when I put paint over the top it's not going to uh, interfere with the colours of the paint because the fixative sort of acts as a little bit of a barrier uh, that you can still work on top of which I actually really really do like. Now finally I am going in with that gouache paint and as you can see it really does start to uh, take more form especially when you add in the block colours and uh, you know just fill in all of those spaces you can really see the artwork sort of come together. So for her skin I'm basically just using a few different peachy tones and uh, for her dress obviously it is white and very light blue so I'm trying to keep towards that sort of colour palette. Um, I added a little bit of extra white into the skin tone after that so that I could get some highlights and uh, I really wanted to sort of uh, emphasise the shapes of uh, her skin and her hands and just try and add a little bit more detail. Now for the shadows of her skin I actually uh, mixed a little bit of crimson into that skin tone as well just so it has a bit more of a pinky peachy sort of uh, undertone in the shadows and I'm actually quite happy with that. It did look a little bit scary adding so much pink to uh, the skin tone but once I put it down and it dried it actually turned out pretty nice. 
So for, the, for her hair, I'm basically just using the stock standard lemon yellow color because I wanted this to be pretty bright and cartoony and Lily does have blonde hair so I thought that that was a nice uh, pop of color and uh, appropriate for this drawing. Now for the uh, slightly bluish parts of her dress, it basically has a sort of like a layered uh, part in her dress where uh, the bottom hem has this little blue bit on it and uh, at the moment it's really really reminding me of Alice in Wonderland mainly because of the blue and white dress and the blonde hair however once I add more details on you can definitely tell that it is someone else so I know I'm going to get comments saying that she looks like Alice in Wonderland but you know what that's alright after that I add some little shadows and highlights to her hair just with a slightly more orangey uh, yellow and also a bit of white mixed in with the yellow as well just so I could sort of get that definition and a little bit more details because she sort of does have little braids in her hair as well as the parts that are just down. And after that I am finally going in with the line art because uh, when I'm painting with like an opaque medium uh, I really do like to do the line art sort of after I get in the block color just because it's a lot easier to uh, lay thin lines uh, over you know block color than it is to color in and not cover up thin lines if that makes sense. But yeah, for her dress, her shoes and her hat, I decided to uh, line it in blue, not black. And I did that because this dress sort of does have a sort of blue and white colour scheme and I thought it would look really nice. However, I also coloured in uh, the line art for other items different colours as well because I didn't want it to just be a just blue line art artwork. Which I do like, but I didn't want for this one. So obviously for her bag I did the line art in black because her bag does have a lot of like sort of black straps on it and I definitely wanted to capture that. And uh, yeah for her skin I did the line art. I basically just got the skin color that I already had and then I mixed a little bit more red and a little bit of brown into it as well just so I could uh, get a sort of darker color that also still matched the skin tone and I think it turned out pretty alright. Now is the time to colour in Nebby, the cheeky little Pokemon that's always sneaking away and up to mischief. <laughs> um, basically I just added in some block colours of blues and purples and I tried to keep it sort of messy and swirly because uh, Nebby or Cosmog as the Pokemon is called does have a sort of a uh, cloud looking body and I definitely wanted to keep to that sort of soft cloudy look. And yeah, I just added in the fields of colour with uh, the black and the yellow and uh, bits of blue for his face. And uh, yeah, most of that was pretty straightforward and easy. Now I definitely want to say this workable fixative that I have been using has definitely been a godsend. Uh, workable fixative, if you're using gouache paint, that stuff is so convenient to use because a lot of the time I will hear people complain about gouache is that you can't really layer because it reactivates the colors underneath. And um, yeah, I just did a nice little layer of workable fixative over the top when I was happy with how those layers were. And basically that acted as a barrier and I was able to paint over the top uh, with some really light colors and even some really wet paint and it definitely did not reactivate the colors underneath so I was able to get those bright white highlights without reactivating the blue. Anyways so uh, this video is starting to come to a close here is the final result and I am so happy with this uh, I love the sort of uh, unfinished look with the background how I just left some of that cardboard showing. I actually really do like to do that in some of my cardboard paintings because I feel like if you're painting on cardboard you want to see that it's cardboard because that's the whole you know point of it. <laughs> but yeah um, I'm really happy with how the colors turned out. This gouache is so vibrant and nice to use and uh, yeah if you liked it please Please let me know below uh, what you think and uh, what you think I should paint next on my gouache with cardboard things because I'm probably going to do another video. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.